blade. Eric Brooks, the man later known as Blade, was born in Soho, London, in 1929. His father, Lucas Cross, a member of the secret society, the Order of Tirana, sent his pregnant wife, Tara, to England before he was taken prisoner in Latveria. There she took the name Vanessa Brooks and found shelter with brothel owner Madame Vanity, another member of the Order of Tirana. Experiencing labour complications, Tara was forced to seek a doctor's assistance. The doctor, Deacon Frost, was actually a ravenous vampire and feasted on the woman as she gave birth, passing on a series of enzymes that altered her baby. The enzymes entered the infant's bloodstream, transforming him into a being tainted by a vampire's kiss, but not converted. In other words, half man, half vampire. Frost was driven away before he could slay the child, but Tara perished, leaving the orphaned Eric Brooks to be raised at Madame Vanity's brothel. While he was growing up on the streets of London, he ran into American veteran vampire slayer Jamal Afari and saved him from being killed by vampires with a grudge against the old man. Afari soon learned about Eric and his origins and decided to take him under his wing, becoming his mentor and foster father and helped him to control his powers. Afari taught Eric everything he knew about hunting fighting and killing vampires. Determined to avenge his mother's death, Eric fashioned himself into a vampire hunter, like Afari, while he was still just a teenager, and started calling himself Blade, after the sharp weapons with which he used to kill vampires with. Finally, Blade and Afari split up when Jamal willingly took the fall for murder when Blade accidentally killed a man who was suffering from a deranged illness which he mistook for being a vampire. After stalking the night on his own for a number of years, Blade became a part of a small band of like-minded individuals hunting Dracula, consisting of Musenda, Orgy, Ogun and Azu. Blade went to Dracula and told him he represented a group of men who believed that in another sixty years vampires would rule the world, and that realising humanity had no chance against their superiors, Blade would offer his and his associates assistance to carry on Dracula's bidding during the daytime. Blade further enticed Dracula with this idea, telling him that they had facilitated a plan that would speed up global conquest to only ten years. Intrigued, Dracula agreed to go with Blade to meet his associates. Dracula met these associates. However, he would soon find out that this was all a trap and that they were really a group of vampire killers. They would nearly succeed in destroying Dracula by driving a stake into his heart. It was during this battle, Blade's companion would tie out wooden knives of his own designs and find that they would work just as well as stakes. However, Dracula soon was resurrected by his servants and exacted revenge by murdering the band of vampire hunters, leaving only Musenda and Blade alive. On November the 7th, 1972, the murder of a bat-like monster in New York brought Blade's attention. When looking for the corpse in a morgue, he discovered Carlu intervening with the body with magic and attacked him, believing him to be a vampire and an enemy. 
As soon as Detective James Lucas, Constance Molina, and Adam Brashear arrived at the scene, the fight was stopped when Blade realized he was among allies. They started investigating the murder as soon as the bear appeared and presented herself as the killer of that creature in self-defense, and she wanted to prevent the Death Walkers from using it for a sacrifice. The bear explained that she herself was the result of a failed attempt of the Death Walkers to extinguish humanity in 1908, and that they would try to do it again. With the mystery solved, the people present formed the mighty Avengers, and went to find the Death Walkers. Kalu tracked down the magic they used in the Werebat to a secret subway below the city hall. The mighty Avengers then attacked the Death Walkers before they could make their sacrifice. After Blade recovered the talisman of Kamar Taj, which was required to perform the sacrifice, Adam Brashear caused the subway to collapse above the Death Walkers. With the Death Walkers stopped, the team disbanded. Blade pressed on, often fighting alongside a team led by Quincy Harker, the great vampire hunter. The company's members included Rachel Van Helsing and Frank Drake. Blade and the team battle Dracula and attempt to kill him and rescue Elizabeth Langley. Blade and the hunters chase Dracula across Europe. After being attacked by his mindless slaves, they reach the mortuary. The team managed to outnumber him, and eventually, Blade got close enough to the Vampire Lord to stake him through the heart, effectively killing Dracula. However, his death was once again short-lived, and he was resurrected by his minions. Blade attempts to once more slay Dracula. However, Dracula managed to overpower him and feed upon Blade before leaving him for dead. Quincy Harker comes across the body of Blade, seeing that he has been bitten by Dracula, and assuming his ally to be dead, Quincy Harker got a stake out and prepared to ram it through Blade's heart. Before Quincy can strike, Blade suddenly revived, and to Quincy's surprise, Blade has not changed into a vampire. Blade explained that through some twist of fate, he is immune to vampire bites, due to the fact that his mother was bitten by one while he was being born. Blade vows to use his immunity to his advantage and not let it stop him from destroying all vampires. They travel to London, and at Quincy's home, he tried to convince Blade to stay and continue their quest to destroy Dracula. Blade declined the offer, feeling that he should get back on the case for the vampire responsible for killing his mother. Blade returned to the flat that he shared with Saffron to find that a vampire has broken in and was attempting to feed upon Saffron. Blade easily destroyed her attacker. A friend, Trudy, explained what happened and Blade agreed to help and he agreed to go out looking for Dracula. He put on his vampire hunting gear and went out into the night and was soon attacked by Dracula in his bat form. Dracula knocked him down into the street with a car speeding toward him. Blade battled Dracula across the city. Their fight took them to a sporting goods store. Dracula was forced to retreat when Blade managed to partially impale the vampire lord in the chest with a broken ski pole, and then later with one of his wooden daggers. With the battle over, Scotland Yard lets Blade walk away from the scene, and he returns home to Saffron and Trudy. He rested and told them he would explain everything to them in the morning. When Dracula travelled to Boston, Blade was also there, tracking down the vampire who killed his mother. Blade attacked the vampire, but was easily stopped in his tracks by Dracula, who demanded that Blade accompany him back to Harold's home to meet with Quincy Harker. Dracula explained that he had nothing to do with the murders, and that the coven is acting on their own. Blade had no interest in getting involved with their battle with Dr. Sun, as he came to destroy the vampire who killed his mother. When Dr. Sun was about to kill Dracula, Blade arrived, 
and offered assistance in killing Dr. Sun. The two work together and destroy him, but after the fight, Blade threatened Dracula, telling him that if he does not help find his mother's killers, he would die by his hands. Dracula refused to be ordered around, leading to a battle between the two. Later on, Blade, still looking for his mother's killer, finds a clue in the apartment. Blade attacked the occupant, but the vampire was revealed to be Hannibal King, the vampire detective. Hannibal easily defeated Blade, but due to their mutual missions, they decided to work together. They waited in Deacon Frost's apartment for his recent victim to rise as a vampire. But when he awoke, he explained he dug up a coffin that had an exact copy of Blade. Blade and Hannibal King continue their hunt for Deacon Frost. They wondered how Frost intends to take over the world with a duplicate of Blade. Blade and Hannibal King went to London, so Blade can visit Saffron. He, whilst he was there, he and King found the doppelganger and revealed that he was created to destroy him. The two fight, but Blade stops, and the two are beginning to fuse together upon physical contact. Hannibal King tried to rush to Blade's rescue. However, he was too late to stop the merger from completing. With the vampire doppelganger in full control of their unified body, it set its sights on King. The doppelganger attacks King, and despite his savage fury, he is easily fought off by Hannibal, who stabs the faux blade in the chest with one of his own wooden daggers, sending the imitator out a window, allowing Hannibal to escape. King is still fleeing from the vampire doppelganger of Blade, and their fight crashes into Dracula's party. Deacon Frost is among the crowd, and he watches eagerly, as that is all part of his ongoing plan. Furious at Blade's interruption of his party, Dracula attacks, and is shocked to find his longtime vampire hunter foe is now a vampire himself. As the battle rages, Anton takes Domini, already visibly pregnant somewhere safe. Blade appears to have the upper hand when he stabs Dracula in the back with one of his wooden daggers. However, Dracula turns around and, mocking the fake Blade's inferior skill to the original, impaled the vampire doppelganger in the chest with a stake, killing him. The agency discontinued after Drake left, and Blade was committed to a psychiatric hospital following a battle with a temporarily resurrected Dracula. Doctor Strange later arranged the release of Blade so that he could join Drake and King in reforming Borderline Incorporated as the Night Stalkers. The mother of all demons, Lilith, hired Blade's agency to kill Ghost Rider, the leather-clad, motorcycle-riding spirit of vengeance, and bad boy, Johnny Blaze, the fiery skeleton's former host. After a protracted battle, Blade and company realised that they had been duped. The team joined with Ghost Rider and Blaze against Lilith, battling her monstrous minion, Meat Market. Blade, Drake and King continued their partnership with Ghost Rider and Blaze, along with Doctor Strange, Morbius, the living vampire, and the Darkhold Redeemers. They formed the Midnight Suns, a group dedicated to preserving the boundaries between our world and the Dark Realms. The Midnight Suns clashed with Lilith and her demon spawn, the Lilin, in a supernatural contest with Earth as the prize. The Midnight Suns proved victorious, destroying Lilith and her brood. Blade also rescued Blade also rescued his close friend, Saffron Calder, from the Darkholders. Blade's desire to destroy supernatural enemies led him to be tricked into using the Darkhold. As Switchblade, he attacked a number of supernatural beings and stole their power in the Midnight Massacre. Eventually, Blade was stopped, and another page of the Darkhold was used to restore things back to normal. The Night Stalkers also battled other threats, such as Hydra's DOA, Department of Occult Armaments. 
Upon the eventual weakening of the Montese formula and the return of vampires, Blade encountered and staked a former ally, a now vampiric Taj Natal. However, the team was unable to prevent its hated quarry, the vampire, from returning to the Earth realm. Blade, Drake, and King, who again had become afflicted with vampirism, began their crusade anew to cleanse the world of all bloodsuckers. Blade and his partners clashed with Dreadlord Varne, supposedly the first ever vampire, the demon who had visited this hellish curse upon men. King and Drake were slain in a bloody and futile battle. The loss of his compatriots only strengthened Blade's resolve to rid the world of vampires, regardless of the circumstances of their creation. Following their victory, King was cured of his vampirism. Subsequently, he and King formed a private investigation firm. Deacon Frost, some time later, teamed up with Marie Laveau to take over Mafia crime in New Orleans as a staging area for greater conquests. Blade was alerted by Bible John, and the two for Dracula and later Marie Laveau, who was attempting to resurrect Varney. It appeared that King and Drake had somehow been merged into Dracula when he was resurrected, but the two have since been freed. Deacon Frost captured Blade, Hannibal King, and Brother Voodoo to establish his reputation amongst the undead in a power grab. The heroes free themselves from the trap, and Blade battles Deacon Frost to a stalemate. Frost escapes, and Blade vows to hunt him down. The daughter of a vampire mafia, Don, manipulated Blade into attacking her father's estate, with a story about seeking vengeance for being turned into one of the undead. But she and her husband really just want to eliminate the Daywalker and remove her father in a power grab. After she and her husband kill her father, Blade slayed the two of them. Later, in New Orleans, Blade teamed up again with Brother Voodoo, to stop Marie Laveau and Deacon Frost's plans to build an undead army. Later, Blade and Spider-Man encountered the vampire Henry Sage and learned of the development of the Daywalker formula, a version of the Sunlight Serum. Blade helped Spider-Man try to capture their former ally, Morbius, who was under the control of a vampire known as the Hunger. During the battle, Morbius bit Blade, but his blood enzymes were not enough to protect him from Morbius's unique form of vampirism. Transforming him into a daywalker, a vampire able to move about into the sunlight and lacking most of the vampire's traditional weaknesses, Blade was now driven by bloodlust. However, he is able to hold it back with a serum. Still in New Orleans, he is contacted by Dominique Levant, she led the hunter in the midst of a vampiric coup, which involved Morbius the living vampire and the powerful Ulysses Sojourner. The Sojourner sought to unify all vampires on the east coast, but Blade was able to stop his plans. Blade was also then temporarily in S.H.I.E.L.D. custody, due to the machinations of Silver Eye as they sought to use him. Their plans for Blade failed, However, Darius Virginian's A True Agenda currently remains unknown. Blade encounters a new type of vampiric creature called a trike, which is fearless of vampires and hunts them. The queen of the trikes is interested in a ceremony which will make Blade her king, and an organisation called the Seven is introduced, which strives after a policy of vampiric equilibrium. They kill both vampires and the trikes, which prey upon them, but only enough to regulate the numbers of both types. They are upset with Blade's recent escalation of vampire killings, as they don't want an all-out war spilling out over the street. So they authorise assassinating him. The Seven revealed that the Queen Scylla of the trikes wants Blade for her mate, so that she can devour him and produce another queen. 
Blade goes on a date with his new girlfriend, Susan, and tells her that the vampires tricked him into slaying his former lover with a sword by drugging her and outfitting her with contact lenses and fake fangs. The vampires capture Fofo, Blade's weapon supplier, and place a tracking device on him so that he will lead them to Blade after they dump him in the river. The vampires get the drop on Blade and capture him. The Drake captures the seven agents who were sent to kill Blade, whilst Blade escapes from the vampires. The Trike brings the agents to his queen after Blade receives some ID from them, which he traces back to their leader. The boy, since leaders of the seven age backwards, makes Blade the offer of a sword to invade the queen's stronghold and slay them so he can submerge himself in the queen's baths and become fully human. After Blade has sex with Susan, he finds out that she has been the Trike Queen in disguise all along. Blade enters the Queen's Baths, but does not change, so he realises the leader of the Seven was manipulating him. Blade then destroys the Trike Lair, but the now pregnant Queen escapes. Realising the Trike numbers have been thinned by Blade, the Seven countermands its previous directive to assassinate him and let him have a free hand in the field. Blade later helps a woman put her to rest her husband, who was killed by a vampire being pursued by Blade. Blade once found the Punisher hiding on a rooftop. He was viewing a deal between vampires and some thugs. The Punisher emerged from the shadows. The true drew their weapons. Blade eventually lowered his and told the Punisher that if he shot him, the vampires below would know. Then the Punisher attached a silencer to his gun and shot Blade in the back. Blade, of course, remained unharmed, and then they argued. They turned their attention to the crime below. Blade admitted that he admired the Punisher, but suddenly there was an explosion a few blocks away. The vampires think it's the thugs and try to eat them, but Blade and the Punisher jumped from the roof to kill them all. Blade came into contact with Dracula again, and appeared to fully destroy the vampire once again, aboard the shield helicarrier. Unknown to Blade, his wealthy father, Lucas Cross, was responsible for Dracula's resurrection. Lucas kidnapped his son and forced Blade to feed on a virgin girl in an attempt to fulfil a prophecy. Blade escaped after biting through his own hand. After taking on a time travel mission for Doctor Doom, Blade received from Doom an elixir that would purportedly cure a vampire of thirst for human blood, but would also remove the bloodless vampire hunters get for killing the dead. During the mission in the past, Blade fulfilled another part of the prophecy by freeing his imprisoned father. Blade's patented black leather trench coat once belonged to Wolverine. Later, Blade would feed on a virgin after biting an evil vampire priest, Draconis. Blade travelled back to home to England and fought Union Jack. Back in the US, he helped Spider-Man battle the criminal fracture. Blade then finally confronts his father. He also gives Hannibal King the elixir, bringing him back to life. Blade was later recruited into the Vanguard, the name of a secret black ops team of superheroes that carried out missions, including assassinations, on foreign soil. During one mission, Micromax was captured by Jafar Yusuf and was forced to tell him about Vanguard and their most powerful operative, Colonel America, Trenton Craft. Yusuf used his powers of body position to cause police detective Stacy Doblin to murder Craft. Her investigation leads to her own arrest but survives a failed assassination attempt by Vanguard operative Dominic Fortune. Dolan discovers the entire Vanguard team and convinces them that she is innocent by exposing Yusuf, who is summarily killed by Blade. Kraft arrives at their facility to reveal that his telekinetic powers allowed him to survive his murder and autopsy, but that he has to destroy Dolan and the entire roster to preserve the secret identity of Vanguard. The Vanguard members survive thanks to the intervention of Retcon, whose powers allowed Kraft to think he had killed them. 
but they are all forced to go into hiding. Following the Skrull invasion of United Kingdom, Blade joined MI-13 to aid with the resurgence of evil forces, resulting from the Skrull's defeat. Blade failed to ingratiate himself, however, when he attempted to kill fellow team member and part vampire, Spitfire. Both Spitfire and Blade, however, settled their differences and pursued a romantic relationship. Blade accompanied Spitfire on a mission to New York on the hunt for an old acquaintance, Amelia Bertram Hayes. Legion travels to the United Kingdom, but MI-13, along with Blade, are there to stop him. Nightmare tries to conquer the Earth, and mind controls Blade and the world's most powerful supernatural beings, forcing them to battle a former Sorcerer Supreme, Jericho Drum. Blade is forced to battle Zarus, son of Dracula, as he unites the various vampire sects. The X-Men are attacked by a siege of vampires, but Blade is around to lend a hand. The vampires are now using technology to protect them from sunlight. Dracula arrives at Utopia and offers his assistance in defeating his son. With vampire activity in San Francisco escalating, Cyclops gives the order for the X-Men to tackle their foe, find out what their next move is. He has Blade teaming up with Angel in taking down a few vampires at a rock and roll concert. Blade and the X-Men battle wave after wave of attacking vampires, with Dracula in the Zarus tries ordering his minions to help him, but receives no support. Blade, who doesn't see eye to eye with Cyclops, charges at Dracula, only to be knocked unconscious with an optic blast. Cyclops then reminds Dracula of their previous unspoken agreement. After a short stare down, Dracula calls Cyclops his bluff, but nonetheless decides to end hostilities with mutants. He even gives Jubilee back to them. Jubilee is put in isolation. Blade believes that the only solution is to put her out of her misery. Wolverine warns him not to, prompting the vampire hunter to leave. While watching it on the monitor, Cyclops and Emma Frost wonder if Jubilee can be cured of the vampire disease. Blade is later invited to help teach a class in the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning on how to kill vampires. When the producers of the Mojoverse can't make a hit series, they call on Mojo to gather an all-new, all-creepy Avengers of the Supernatural. Blade is kidnapped, along with a group of other supernatural heroes, and forced to battle for their entertainment. However, they are able to escape, and the team disbands. Soon after, Blade secretly arrived in New York City, in order to ask his associate, Spectrum, for help on a mission. However, he was interrupted by the invasion of Thanos' army. He decided to help the heroes, but under a disguise so he couldn't be recognised, for which he became the Spider-Hero, using a faux Spider-Man suit from a superhero costume shop. He became part of the team of heroes now named the Mighty Avengers. The Mighty Avengers continue to battle the forces of Proxima Midnight, Ebony Moore forcibly uses Doctor Strange to summon the one and only Shumagorath to Earth. After the battle, Spider-Hero is among those Luke Cage declared in his Mighty Avengers, named after a Twitter hashtag he used to describe them. Following the victory of Earth's heroes over Thanos' army, Eric adopted Hawkeye's former identity of Ronin. As Ronin, Blade accompanied his teammates to Atalan, he recovered the talisman of Kamar Taj, the Death Walkers were looking for, and temporarily left the team during their fight against Lyshidus, the Hellhound. Days later, Ronin was attacked by ninja were snakes, but he was sent by the Death Walkers, who had discovered Blade's disguise, to get the talisman of Kamar Taj. Numerous other creatures were sent to hunt down Blade, and he was ultimately defeated by were-roosters. Blade was then brought to the Death Walkers, who planned to use him for a sacrifice. Even though he escaped captivity after being drained a portion of his blood, 
and the mighty Avengers located him, Blade couldn't prevent the Death Walkers from finishing their ritual. The successfully finished ceremony merged them together into the Death Walker Prime, a creature with control over the four elements, thus power over the fifth, the spirit, which would be the key for it to destroy humankind. However, the mighty Avengers managed to get hold of the cup used in the ritual of merging, and using a similar procedure, merged themselves into the Avenger Prime, which managed to destroy the Deathwalker Prime, mainly because, unlike the Deathwalker, the different personas merged into it were truly spiritually bonded, while the personas composing the Deathwalker were fighting for control. Due to the fact that his mother was bitten by a vampire whilst giving birth to him, Blade was born with an immunity to the effects of vampire bites, the ability to smell supernatural creatures, a greatly prolonged lifespan, and sensitivity to bright light. However, after being bitten by Michael Morbius, Blade gained various superhuman physical capabilities, similar to those of vampires. Yet Blade claimed to have been born a half-vampire, and that Morbius' bite changed nothing, thus having his origin retconned. Blade's sense of sight and hearing are heightened to levels comparable to those possessed by true vampires. He is supernaturally strong and is capable of lifting about one ton. He is also capable of running and moving at speeds greater than even the finest human athlete. His agility, balance and bodily coordination are enhanced to levels that are beyond the natural physical limits of the finest humans. His musculature generates less fatigue toxins during physical activity than the musculature of an ordinary human. He can exert himself at peak capacity for several hours before fatigue begins to impair him. His vampire-human hybrid tissue allows him to sustain physical trauma to a certain extent. He can withstand powerful energy blasts, exposure to temperature extremes, and great impact forces without being injured. He, like full vampires, possesses an accelerated healing ability that allows him to heal mild to moderate injuries with much greater speed and efficiency than an ordinary human. Wolverine himself stated that his regeneration was almost on par with his during his fight with Blade in the Civil War. However, he is not able to regenerate missing limbs or organs. Although not a pure vampire, he does have the advantage of being a hybrid, this includes a pseudo-immortality, greatly enhanced lifespan. This was also noted in the Superhuman Registration Act as one of his abilities. Also, no change of his appearance has been seen during his time on Earth, besides losing his hair sometimes. He is a master martial artist, an expert markman, expert swordsman, multilingual, expert vehicular driver, and showed exceptional prowess in sorcery in the supernatural. He is born as a damp here. This altered his skeletal and cardiac muscle system on a cellular level. His skeletal muscles are more dense, more efficient, and faster, allowing him to produce short, fast bursts of excessive force. He does possess one weakness, common to all vampires, the need to ingest fresh blood in order to stay alive. However, rather than consume blood, he ingests or injects a specially designed serum that provides even better nourishment than blood would provide. If he the blade doesn't drink the serum for an extended period of time, he will weaken and his self-control will be stretched. He would be forced to attack a human and consume his or her blood if this period is more than a week. He does have a huge amount of this serum in his inventory, and actually never runs out of energy. One serum is enough for 24 hours of extended combat, or he can use it quickly to recover from grave wounds. Although he has a special meditation to maintain his self-control, an extended period of time without consuming either blood or a serum would eventually prove fatal.